Alrighty guys, back on the Super Sport build. We've been hard at it all day, Ice Park. Yeah. He's over there uh, plastic welding up the gas tank. You guys had saw in the previous video on this machine, I'd show that the studs had sawed through the tank, just a skosh. Um, so he's plastic welding that up. Motor set in, I went through the drive clutch and put the weights back in it. We had to rob the weights out of it for a different project. Um, put them back in there, just gave it a quick and dirty clean found a clutch bolt for it. We were just looking at the center to center on the clutches, uh, right on 12 inches, so that's good. And then we were just gonna check the offset measurements with our straight edge. Um, I'll get spark for that later. And then threw some new oil lines on there. And then I was gonna go through the carburetors just to see what's inside of them. We checked the pickup line in the tank, that was all good. Put a little bit of oil in the injection bottle to see if we can bleed the pump out later. Uh, Mark fixed the wiring that was melted on the exhaust side, loomed that all up nicely. And then we just got to tighten the motor down once we get the clutch alignment happy. And uh, like I said, just set the carbs in. We might be able to hear it run today. The only thing I don't have is uh, a choke. The T for the choke cable is broken, and then obviously the handle. But I might be able to salvage one out of a different cable setup. And then our handlebars are just kind of chilling half mocked up there and it looks like probably need to bleed the brakes it's been sitting for so long it wants to well we greased the entire front end components mark went through put the skis on greased everything up there steering shaft front spindles this thing steers like butter um, which is awesome the only thing left to do would be like i said get the motor tight get everything buttoned up there and then check the track realign the track and tighten all that stuff up but looking like a sled for the most part if you haven't watched the rebuild video on this engine make sure you go check that out she definitely has some some good compression oh yeah feels real good clutch is in pretty good shape actually there wasn't really anything too worn out um took a little scotch bright to the sheaves got them cleaned up and the secondary still feels good get some get some float there so that's good I will get the carburetors, pull one apart, inspect it, and then got to replace the fuel line on the end of the bowls and uh, see how nasty the insides are. I don't think it's going to be that bad. I had them out cleaned, you know, four or five years ago. So we'll see how bad the varnish is in it. Pulled the bowl off of the one carb. Like I figured, it wasn't that bad at all. Um, you can see, very clean. Floats all move good. So I'll just, just kind of rinse it out and break clean and call it a day there because I already did a salad and cleaned it for us five years ago. And we didn't let varnish sit in it. Yay. Oh, how far about Float height looked awesome. Needle and seat moves freely. I'm going to pull the main jet and the, the tube out and just make sure I can blow through the air bleed on the tube. Um, Feeling a little suspect right now. Is that a good dingo? Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. You didn't put the clamp on though, you know, before you put it on, but no need. Oh, no. If you, oh. Can, if you can pull that off, I am. I didn't say those clamps were something else. Did I He's talking it? about the hose right here on the end, so. We, we found some bad news. So this was originally taken apart by some uneducated people. Um, and I was told this, so I, it's not like I, it, I can really get mad. Um, if you guys look at this, I wonder why it ran bad, dude. Yeah. So you see the tube opening right there? See how that's facing the air cleaner? That should be facing the intake. Um, and there's a locating pin that's not supposed to be, well, I don't know what happened to this one, but that hole right there has a little locating pin and there's a hole You'll see it right there. That notch has a line up with that. So you can only put the tube in one direction. This is 180 off. So it's taking the fuel, spinning it back in the air cleaner, then it has to re-suck it through the intake. So we're gonna try to get it out, but I'm, I'm hoping just one of them's like that and not both. Um, that'll make it run a little rough.
reason I couldn't blow through the, let's see if it'll focus here. Focus. Okay. The reason I couldn't blow through that little hole is because the tube was faced the other way. So that would make it run very poorly, guys. So we're going to put the tube back in the correct orientation, double check our work. You can see we took the washer off, used the main jet as a driver so we didn't, we didn't mar the threads up. And uh, everything's good there. So we'll put her back together, double check the other carb and do a quick and dirty, and we should be rolling. So little, little educational um, tip there. Don't force these in. Usually you can only put them in one way. But uh, I'm sure there's a will, there's a way to mess it up. Mark's wiring in the tether, guys, for our kill switch. I'll show you the wires that he's using as I'm burping up gas fumes. Ugh. <laughs> nice. The other carburetor, we got that fixed. Got that tube oriented the right direction. I'm gonna have to go to the other garage. Looks like this one is the right direction. So that. I don't know, probably because you're just Eugene or something. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Check out for first, like a real weird flat washer. Yeah. Cool. He just, like I said, he's putting his tether in over there, plumbing that in. And then we'll just make sure it functions. And then tighten the motor down, and we're pretty damn close besides exhaust and the fuel tank. So fuel tank looks like we're good. Exhaust looks like that's done and welded. Oh, yeah. Good job. Mark did a good job on the welding of the exhaust. Yeah. I'm going to jack it on. This is freezing. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, Eugene. Good clean up over here. Some nasty fuel remnants was in there, guys. And, oh, wood stoves are cranking, but it cooled off a ton here today. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm loving this, man. I cleaned them out and I ran good gas. Just a hint of the smell. When you guys are looking at it, you can see the float height. You want that straight across on these old Makunis. That's where you want it, straight across, parallel with the gasket surface. So. And just make sure that your needle moves, which it does. So that's great. I'm just going to blow that out with brake cleaner on both the, the carburetor and the bowl. Make sure that's all good. on these carburetors so inside of here see this this passage right here and there's a little it's actually a little brass almost like a jet in the bottom of the bowl that is connected with the choke pipe i would call it on the body of the carburetor and that's what sucks extra fuel to richen your mixture uh, when the choke is pulled so if you guys didn't know that that's fuel is brought up through that down there, up there, up the tube, uh, when your choke is activated. So, some guys don't know how all that works. So, now you know. Like I said, we're just gonna do a little quick and dirty here. The fuel line's still draped over it. A little brake clean won't hurt the belly pan at all. Just spray through the jets a little bit. Yep, that looks good. And we just hit the air bleed. Yep, we're good there. Choke air bleed. Golden, guys, golden. The pan needed a cleaning anyways. <laughs> oh, she's pretty low on wind. Just blow a little bit here. We are all good with that. 
So that carb is, is fine. Just double check the main jet of tightness. Yep. I'll check the pilot if the screwdriver fits in there. Yep. Good. And bowls are nice and clean. Bolts are working good. Pull them back on there. One thing I didn't show was uh, blowing through the vent, making sure that this vent line isn't clogged. Um, if that's clogged, it's going to run really rich and it's going to run very poorly. So make sure you always take those hoses off, blow that out. Uh, it's like an overflow, but also a bowl vent. So very important. Our slide and needle in good shape. Everything looks good there. Go ahead and sl slide that back in. Gasket on top of the slide cap was still in place. And we thread that back on. All right, guys, so I'm working on the oil pump. I'm gonna zoom you in there. It's gonna hook the cable in. Easier said than done. You gotta get the little thing to go uh, rotate it back that way. There we go. And then put that there, and that sits there. And we get this threaded up on there. There's actually two marks on the oil pump itself, and I'll show you guys where they are. This one might have been a little bit. The idle one isn't as critical um, as your wide open throttle one. I'm gonna try to zoom you in there as far as I can, but my camera isn't that good. You'll see there's a hash mark on the pump and a hash mark on the on the arm, and the pump has a hash mark. One at idle, and then when the, the arm is brought up, there's gonna be another mark on this ear or your your arm and that's going to line up with the one on that boss on the pump the wide open one is more critical than idle so that's what controls your amount of oil that's getting pumped into the engine so you guys can see those those hash marks there and as i you can see they line up at wide open they're a little off at um, idle which is fine but wide open they line up and that's uh, this mark right there and then that hash mark on the arm so there's idle and there's wide open so you want it right about there so we just tighten our we tighten our jam nuts up here and then double check our work and if it's good we're ready to go the bleeder is right here this here screw Usually it's like an eight millimeter flat blade, probably ain't gonna get her done um, unless somebody's had it off. So I, I open that up until I see no air. I see just straight oil coming out of here, like, like ble bleeding brakes. Um, you don't want any air up to this point. Once you get clean oil and no air, close that up. And then, like I said, as it's running, it, it will pump up in your lines. I always pre-mix the first tank, especially on a full rebuild like that. I always go, you know, at least a hundred to one just for that added lubrication for the first little bit of runtime. So that is what you do on your oil pump, guys. Hopefully that clears anything up if, if you guys were confused about how oil pumps uh, work and how they, you know, the adjustment on that cable. That's what I've been taught is those marks on the, on the pump arm. Uh, I never had one fail uh, from doing it that way. So take it as you wish. Maybe other guys in the comments will have different ideas, but some like to set it a little bit richer, leaner, whatever but I always was told that you want that to line up at wide open, so. We ended up tightening the engine mounting bolts down. We checked our center to center, 12 inches, center to bolt, center to bolt, 12 inches, just what spec calls for. 
This is actually a clutch holding tool. I use it as my straight edge on the back of a lot of clutches to uh, check offset. I forgot how I had this. I had it in here just, oh yeah, something like this. And I, I just squeeze it tight with the clutch and I measure the distance from the clutch edge, the clutch tool's edge to the edge of the sheave on the secondary. And we're about just shy of five eighths in the front. Oh, yep. And then we're just about shy of five eighths in the back. So we're like pretty much dead square. In a perfect world, you want the front measurement just a skosh larger than the rear. So when the engine torque loads, it'll actually um, get it straight, basically. So if your gaps like that to start with, as the engine pulls back, it'll get everything kind of squared up. So that's how you check offset and in, in the line, uh, offset and center to center, the uh, old-fashioned, not professional way, but make sure you got some float on your secondary. When you start it up, you can tell if it's going to be a binding issue or not. Alrighty guys, so we're plumbing that tether in. I'm just going to show you a few things that we did. Just an easy, quick way to do it. Um, this is definitely not the professional way that if you want to keep your switches that are in place intact, definitely don't do it this way. But um, this is the way we've, we've done it in the past just because I don't care about the other switches. So tether took place of our key switch. We have the black wire which comes from the CDI box kill wire and the brown wire, which is chassis ground, connected with our tether in line. And our tether is normally open. And when it gets pulled off, it closes this wire, which is the CDI kill to ground. Um, and that was right off of what would have been took in place of your key switch. This is accessories for your uh, hot grips and, and other random accessories. And then, like I said, that kill switch wire is the one coming off the CDI coil unit down there. And it usually has a white or cream colored bullet uh, when they're factory from Polaris. So we just kind of tidy that up with a new bullet connector because I had that cut for testing reasons. And uh, that's how she's plumbed in. Should be the first attempt of starting this cave, eh, Spark? Oh yeah. Got everything put back together, belt on it, tank back in, fuel in. Brakes are working, uh, electrical's tightened up. The only thing we need is a choke cable fix, but we're just gonna manually choke it and see if it'll start on its own. Uh, I just got the bolts back in the track for the adjusters. There's one seized adjuster. That's why I never loosened it five years ago, because it was seized and we soaked it. Um, but the track's back to where you can spin it over. OEM belt, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I pressurized it a little bit. We'll see if it's enough. I'm going to rope it over and pressurize it again. Sure. And yeah, just lighten it up. Yeah, that's, that's good, buddy. Yeah, you're good now. Cool. Yeah. Listen, I'm just going to manually. I'll just hand choke it, buddy. Drip it a little. No. Oh, yeah. Ready? Yeah.
she's ran in probably five years good four for sure obviously it's very frowned upon to run your engine with the clutch cover off guys it's a no-no um that's why it's really nice to watch how everything when it climbs and sinks right it's a good learning thing but don't be standing over it like i was it's kind of (laughs) it's kind of a really bad thing to do so um definitely always run a clutch cover at all times but for testing and looking at things yes it's okay but it's dangerous just be aware Oil lines, guys, they filled right up, perfect. Uh, so the oil pumps bled out, that's good. Um, thing runs awesome, idles perfect, no no air leaks or not. I mean, it's, and the baffle's all cooked out of that pipe. Yeah, it looks Or whatever. Cool. It, it sounds it rowdy, sounds, dude. It does. She's gonna there, zing, like, too. Hmm. That thing's gonna zing, Where man. Go? It's ready to rip, buddy. <laughs> Uh, hopefully the next time you see this it's in the snow um, we're gonna put the finishing touches on it I saw the speedo spinning around um, so that's good um, I didn't look at the tail light worked did you does that thing ever run strong though and the clutch alignment and offset's perfect. Dude, the thing wasn't even creeping barely. Just that new belt. Yeah. Nice sled. Dude. Anyways, guys, another cheap sled revival. Until the next one. <laughs>